even though the finale is close at hand, there's still trouble or turmoil that's not yet resolved. Glasnost sort of works through some of the issues, so to speak, some of the troubles through this cadenza. He was smart to do this. A flashy, joyous cadenza at this point would have taken away all the steam and joy and sense of arrival out of the finale. Separation between soloist and tutti gives way in the finale. Soloist's quarter note on beat two is the last moment of quote solo voice before the orchestra and soloist end together. This is very much like the end of the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto, almost identical. The finale movement. Um, sort of set up the contrast between soloist and, and orchestra more distinctly than the earlier two movements. There's a drama there. And so he's playing on that drama right up until the very last bar um, of having them play separately, play together, play just just the violin, just the orchestra, and together, and then, you know, a brief moment of just the violin, that solo voice, you know, give attention to the soloist one last time, and then crash, you know, and together. <laughs> Another thing interesting about the final bar is that this is the only time in the entire piece where he saves the effect of having the entire orchestra and soloist play in unison with no chord tone. This is often used by composers to signal the very end of a piece. He ends with everybody on the note A. And this is not something completely innovative by Glasnost, and, and many other composers, Mozart and Beethoven and others, use this technique. But I found that it was very wonderfully crafted, the way that he saves that effect for this moment in the piece. 